What's up, everybody? Colin Sheen and Vinny Blonde back here on Trust the Profits YouTube page. Vinny, we must be doing something right on Doubling Down because they gave us another show. I know. It's like we haven't missed the last three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they're trying to distract us from doing the double. Like, these guys stink. Let's put them on a different yeah, show. Yeah, just don't. Can, uh... just, just analyze stuff. Don't give us picks. <laughs> <laughs> So that's exactly what we're going to do here on Kentucky Derby prep briefing, a little play on press briefing there, is we're going to try and keep these nice and quick and just give you an update on what's going on on the road to the Kentucky Derby. I always say it's never too early to talk about Saratoga. It's never too early to talk about the Breeders' Cup. And it's really never too early to talk about the Kentucky Derby. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about today, which I had mentioned to you, Vinny, which I didn't realize until I started doing a little research for this show, is that there's been a change to the point system for this year's Kentucky Derby. Yeah, um, a lot of those meaningless 10-point preps early on in the year are now worth 20 points. Uh, definitely interesting, definitely changes some things up. I definitely think we're going to see some of the, uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of the bigger name horses do what uh, White Abario did. Uh, this year, which is he ran in the Holy Bull, which at the time was worth 10, and then skipped the middle prep and then ran in the 100-point prep, the Florida Derby. With the with these beginning preps now being worth 20, that means if you, if you win and you come in second in the 100-point prep, you're guaranteed in because you'll have 60 points. So... It, with increasing the point value, I think you're going to see a lot more of those horses try that rather than just waiting until after the 10 point preps to debut. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. And they've elevated the specific races that they've elevated for points are the Lecomte, the Southwest, the wizard withers, the Holy bull, the Robert B Lewis, the Sam F Davis and the John Batagula Memorial. And they've also added points for fifth place. That's also a new twist on it. Now, you know, you might just rack up those little one and two points here and there. But when you look at the field, right, when you're adding up those points, that, you know, take last year, right? What was it, like 23, 24 points, I think, to get you in? Those last 15 through 25 are all within a couple of points. Um, and so those little fifth place finishes um, may end up making a difference. I think, obviously, the obvious is that the what's going to get you in is going to need to be not in the 20s. You're probably going to need to get into the 30s now. Um, and so, you know, the, the press release said that they wanted to grow Derby fever for more horses and more ownership groups and potentially increase the field size in the, in the championship series races in advance of the Derby. So they're trying to attract more horses to these earlier races by offering more points. Uh, I guess it'll be interesting to see, but it's something, like I said, that I had missed. Um, and you had it well, and we started to look into it. And you always want to let this play out a little bit to kind of see. Remember the first year of the point system? It was like, oh, my God, the world's on yeah. fire. and What are we doing? And uh, until you finally see four or five years and get a sense of what it really will take to get into the derby, there's obviously the winning you're in, right? Those 150s, you win those, you're in. Um, yeah, I still don't like the point system. Um, I mean, I know this year we had this year we had Rich Strike which, I mean, we could have run that race, I feel like, a hundred more times, and he would never win again. But you, you, I feel like it's, like, you, you know, who, like, you have a feeling of, like, who's going to win. And I guess this this prep season kind of hinted at this would be the year that there would be an upset because nobody, it was, like, every prep had a different winner this year. So I think it was, like, 40 points was the cutoff this year to make it into the Derby. It was like 40 points plus you like plus purse uh, plus great uh, unrestricted graded stakes earnings like got you in this year. So it was already like the highest amount that it, they had had under the point system. So it was kind of a crazy year. But in most of the years past, it's been like, all right, well, here's the four or five top horses. One of them is probably going to win the Derby. Most likely it's going to be the one who's coming in with the best numbers. So I, I really I get that they want more the more little guys involved or more connections involved in the Derby. But at the end of the day, you know, if a horse comes in fifth place in four preps and then backs his way into the Derby with like 10 points, like he's going to be a hundred to one anyway. And he like, unless it's a miracle again, maybe. So I don't, 
I really, I don't get the fifth place point thing, but whatever. Yeah, m little little points there. And one thing to notice, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile also did get adjusted. The winner now gets 30 points instead of 20, and they uh, will be awarding points all the way down to the fifth spot. So with that, we'll take a look back real quick on what happened this summer at Saratoga Vinny. Uh, who kind of made the list of your summer impressions of two-year-olds that you're keeping your eye on before we get into the full uh, prep series? Um, I well specifically at Saratoga, I, I feel like – I, I feel like Forte is obviously the top one, even though I still am not 100% sure how good he really is. Um, the hopeful was in the slop, and I hate basing my... I hate basing things off of horses that went in the slop. I really do. Uh, he looked really good doing it, but he's bred for the slop, sired by violence. Uh, his, whole, his whole pedigree is meant for the slop, but he ran like... He ran like everybody thought he would. Uh, what in the Stan in the Sanford, I believe it was, mm -hmm. was the race where everybody bet him, and he just didn't. He didn't show up. He ran like that. He very that clearly looks right. like. Oh, it was more yeah, and like he very clearly looks like a two-turn horse, but hard to really be hyped about him after that. Uh, after a win in the slop, and especially since he beat Golfport. Who he is? Golfport is back this weekend, which is great. But Golfport also has been the heavy favorite in his last two races and has come in second his last two. So, like, are we overhyping Golfport? Um, Damon, uh, Damon's Mound who beat Golfport's another one uh, to keep your that I think a lot of people have their eye on currently. He ran very good in the Saratoga Special. He didn't run great at all in the Iroquois, which honestly is expected. I, uh, but I think he's going to be one of those horses that he might not be a derby horse, but it wouldn't surprise me if he bounces back well, and he ends up being like a Pat day mile type horse. And then they cut him back to sprinting. Cause he looked very good around one turn did not seem to appreciate the two turns. Um, but very few horses out of Saratoga, in my opinion, at least as of right now, for horses to watch for the upcoming the upcoming Derby preps. Yeah, and on that race replay, Gulfport was the horse that went about I don't know fifteen wide on the, on the turn there in the slop. Yeah, and, and it, that usually just means that, that like there. he looked he he runs again. Like I say, he runs again this Saturday in the Champagne. I don't. His pedigree says he should be able to handle another turn but he just looked tired there i don't know maybe it's the slop but he's tired by uncle mo we should have liked the slop he seems like a very confusing horse he seems like one of those horses that like if he puts all the pieces together he's really good but four out of five times the pieces won't all be there and he'll he'll do that so he, he's a tough one to judge. I wouldn't be shocked if he aired that field, though, on, on Saturday, because if he puts everything together, I still think he's the best horse in that race. And speaking of the Iroquois Stakes, as you mentioned it there, that was the official kickoff to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Curly Jack was your winner, picking up 10 points. The Iroquois Stakes has done okay in presenting uh, some races for the Kentucky Derby, not really any Winners, I know looking at Lee came out of the Iroquois, Patio Prado, I don't know if you remember Patio Prado. I loved, I love, I love Patio Prado. He was a turf horse though, but I love Patty. So just looking back yeah. on what the Iroquois has produced, um, and Curly Jack took that race. Uh, what did you think about Curly Jack? Did you see that one? I, I'm not a huge fan of, of Curly Jack. I, I like his pedigree a lot, but I don't. He's one of those horses. I feel like he's a. I do still feel like he's a cut below. Um, I don't really feel like there was anything in the Iroquois personally. Um, Here he is on the I, outside there, highlighted with the Trust the Profits logo. Nice clean trip, gets clear. The seven's closing on him. Mm -hmm. um, and and he beat uh, the two big favorites. He beat in that race where uh, Damon's Mound. Who I had, who we previously talked about, and he beat, uh, he beat T, uh, I'm sorry, he beat Echo again. And now Echo again, it was very hyped out of Saratoga. He ran huge on debut, but his 
uh, his damn teardrop. It wouldn't surprise me if this one ends up being like a grade three caliber horse because that's kind of what she tends to produce. Uh, pneumatic from uh, a couple of years ago uh, is a full sibling, and so is uh, Coscatera from a couple of years ago is a full sibling, and both of them were very hyped. They ran, yeah. You know, they had a couple races in their career that looked really good, and then when they stepped up to like top graded stakes company, they kind of fell apart. So I, I don't really know what he beat there. It's a good win. I would be shocked. I, I, I this horse is going to be put on the Derby Trail all next year if he stays healthy. So probably, especially since he already has ten points, he's going to find his way in the gate. I, I would need to see something huge out of him though to really consider him a a legit. A legit contender. The big question is, will he take all the money that Happy Jack took, right? Yes. Are you you anything with the really name Jack? Jack. He's, yeah, he's... Uh, a, here's your yeah, here's your money burner for 2023 for the Derby. <laughs> and Damon's mound and Echo again in that race really went at it uh, in the backstretch. Yeah. Really, really kind of battled it out, and that set up nicely for those closures in that race. So we'll jump lastly to uh, what we have upcoming this weekend. As you mentioned, it's the Champagne Stakes. The Champagne has produced 23 Kentucky Derby winners between 1892 and 2010. Uh, Count Fleet, Seattle Slough, just to name a few. Since 2000, the only one we've had is Super Saver. But Vinny, when I looked at the Champagne Stakes winners, man, the list is uh, really impressive. Uh, you got Jack Christopher, Jackie's Warrior, Tis the Law, Union Rags, Uncle Mo, War Pass, Birdstone, Spectacular Bid. So they might not be Kentucky Derby winners, but this is definitely a race where you can keep your eye on those that contend well out of this in the future to be probably doing well in the future. Yeah, and I mean, even last year's uh, last year's edition gave us the Belmont winner in uh, Mo Donegal and gave us uh, Zandon. Uh, okay. It's usually a, it's usually a very it, it, the race is usually good. It's just usually not good as a Derby prep. Um, right. Zandon did run very well out of it. Uh, this year and uh, Mo Donegal didn't run the worst derby and then obviously he came back to win the Belmont so like this year it was a particularly strong edition of the of the champagne uh, I a golf like we we talked about golf port okay um, Brad Cox is verifying who went off a very heavy favorite I forget who he's a He's a half to um, give me one second here. I just want to see. Sire justify. He's got Bryce yeah, Hoff. he's got he's Mario. Yeah, he's sired by he's sired by justify. Um, he's a. Uh, this one debuted on Travers Day. I wish I remember what the. Uh, who he was. Todd Pletcher doesn't have any uh, starters in this race. He does. He has won this race the most with six win so that's an angle that you can't take into this one uh verifying with a 97 prison at speed figure uh will definitely be one of your betting favorites i would imagine especially with the connections of cox and rosario yep oh this is the one that's a uh, yeah this uh verifying is the uh is the half to uh midnight bizu that's why the horse took so much oh, i that's remember right. it was a half to somebody i do so i, I remember i was yeah. there with you that day yeah, so verifying is one of those that gonna take money, probably going to be very good. Um, Gulfport, those are kind of my those are kind of my top two. Uh, I'd be surprised if Top Recruit repeats his effort. Um, Adamo, a uh, Adamio, a <laughs> Firenze, or however you however you spell however you pronounce it. He's good. I just I don't think he is top stakes caliber good, and I think that's kind of I think he's kind of going to be a horse that we can gauge how good some of these others are off of him. Um, I don't think he's going to run a bad race, but like if he wins, I think the rest of the field's kind of suspect. If somebody beats him by two or three lengths, okay, they're probably a decent. They're probably decent. Um, so I would kind of use him as a gauge, as I, I think he's going to rack up a lot of New York bred stakes uh, in his future but probably not so much at the open company level. That's race 10 on the card at Belmont at Aqueduct. Important to keep in mind is that Aqueduct, not actually at Belmont going one mile. We're going to keep this under 15 minutes. That's your first episode of prep briefing. Next week, we'll come back, give you an update on what happened in the champagne and looking forward to the weekend after that. Don't forget to check us out for doubling down where we got to break our cold streak. Uh, we will catch you next time.